Nice little promise ring you got there. That's new. Get that on your last romantic date? Don't you have anything better to do? I bet you haven't checked the collection plates for straight coins in at least a half an hour. Actually, no. I was sent here to keep an eye on you. <laughs> Unlikely. Truthfully, I'm here to find out why you haven't been doing your job. Please stop wasting my time so I can actually do my job. What do you want, anyway? I want to know why you and your cadre proofs haven't got what we need yet from that skeezy little vampire. What's taking so long? That's being taken care of. What do you mean, taken care of? I mean, sister, that it has become painfully obvious to any dimwit with the exception of yourself that the vampire in question wasn't going to be broken, no matter how many limbs we removed. More likely, he doesn't even know Justine's location in the first place. We've moved on to Plan B. What? We? Plan B? I suggest you start elaborating real quick. As Grace and I have decided that pulling the legs and the wings off the fly was getting us nowhere. His arrogance and sarcasm seems to regenerate just as fast as his limbs. We've moved on to the next logical step. Which is? Which is obvious. I thought you had some semblance of an education, my dear. W weren't you an extortionist or something? Tell me, you do remember us leaving the church and coming back here to the private residence? under the pretense of going back to Germany. That way we can stay just far enough out of Sean's range that he does not sense the glory that is his grace. Yes, yes, I was there for the big dramatic exit. I do hope Jean bought that ridiculous ruse for your sake. What a show that was. Oh, and if I remember correctly, I was the one forced to carry most of his grace's belongings because somebody didn't want to break a nail. I had much more pressing matters to attend to. Mm, pressing, right, I can tell. You know, they say vampires have a certain scent to them, and right now, all I can smell is him. The only thing that I can detect is the odor of desperation, and it's not coming from me. You're just a pathetic wannabe who has no idea what he's really up against. I have stepped into the belly of the beast and am more than prepared. Unlike you. Well, don't come whining to me when things don't go your way. Oh wait, we'll be able to whine. You'll just be dead. Stay focused here for just a minute. The whole point was to clear the church of all essential personnel, leaving just the skeleton crew behind. Leaving Sean in the hands of one of our most incompetent priests while we sit back, wait, and watch. Great. While we cool our heels here in his private playground, just far enough away to sever that incestuous psychic blood connection vampire sires have with their spawn, while we squat here bored out of our skulls, what is that going to accomplish? While they play vampire charades in a dungeon, we are running out of time. His grace is running out of time. You've never actually met Sean, have you? No, and I don't need to. You wouldn't want to. You know, he'd have your blood drained and your knickers around your knees in five minutes. And you, you would have begged for both. Oh, you're an asshole. Yes. But this, uh, asshole, as you so elegantly put it, has done his homework on that crap, Gandhi. I dare say I know him better than he knows himself. We estimate that within days he will have seduced and eaten that milk toast of a priest, and then devoured his way out of the church, silently, methodically, leaving no trace, raising no alarm. 
That's his style. Then plan B fully begins. Pity you didn't think of that. Why was I not informed of any of this? I am his grace's personal advisor, not you! You are not informed, Sister Elizabeth, because it's you who's not been doing your job. If there is actually a nun under this costume. You're a funny little man. Or really more of a boy, which is what he obviously prefers. I'm no more nun than you are a priest. I'll give you that much. But you, all dressed up as a holy man, should be more careful with things you say and think. I can see why he hired you. You are so sexy when you're aggressive. But you were acquired for the grace's service, for your supposed telepathic abilities, and that through these abilities we might be able to find a woman. We've made some progress, not as much as we'd like. She seems almost impossible to find. Oh, that's right. She was born with her talents from a long line of powerful telepaths. Where did you get your uh, abilities again? Wikipedia has been very unreliable on this subject. Is it borrowed? Is it stolen? Or is it fake? I've worked hard to get everything I have. You wouldn't know a thing about that, brown nosing your way up the ladder and into his bed. I bet your fancy education didn't prepare you for this kind of job. God, I hate to think what your internship was like. While you've been busy bending over, I've been out earning everything I have. Earning? Mm, that's rich. From what I hear, the only thing you've ever earned is tip money. And I am still very curious about how you came about your supposed telepathic abilities. How did you acquire them anyway? Some say it was a con. A, an exorcism gone wrong. A little dalliance with a Ouija board, perhaps, turn you into a thrift store Linda Blair? Ah, uh, perhaps a little demon crawled up your ass and gave you an ability to see. Bullshit. I'd be more impressed with Miss Cleo being his grace's personal advisor. At least she wouldn't be on such a power trip. Power trip? Well, thank you, Mr. Pot, for reminding me the color of my kettle. Rest assured, Father, you have no idea what I've seen, what I've felt, what I've had to do and can do. How about you? How does a pathetic hanger-on such as yourself gain access to the innermost chamber of one of the oldest and most powerful vampires on the planet in such a short span of time? What do you have to do every night to keep that up? Wouldn't you like to know? Maybe I'll take a peek. This won't hurt much. Go ahead. I've got nothing to hide. No secrets here. That is, assuming you can actually see into my skull, which I doubt. I don't think His Grace, though, would appreciate your grubby paws, psychic or otherwise, all over his property. He doesn't like seconds. Ugh, I'll pass. I gain better insight anyway from jokes on gum wrappers. He can have you. You know, I can't begin to imagine your obsession, or attraction to that creature. You help him dress, change his bedpans, put your altar boys, and get on your knees for what? The privilege of being in his inner chamber? What price do you pay to let him sink his teeth in you whenever and wherever he wants? Do you hope to swallow a little greatness while you're at play in the fields of the Lord in there? You do not see what I see. God, I wouldn't want to. You completely lack the ability of comprehending such greatness and intensity. I'm capable of much more than your parasitic little mind can imagine. You're capable of outliving your usefulness. Oh, same goes for you. It's good to see we're on the same page for something. I'm quite comfortable in my position. Don't be. I've seen a long line of your kind come and go. You'll be gone, one way or another, just like the rest. Oh, and if you're entertaining the notion that he'll turn you, and you'll become his next little Jean, you're as idiotic as that worthless priest you sent to his death. Ah, here. Quinn. His name is Father Richard Quinn. Whatever. He's dead. Just like you will be soon. Preferably with his grace sucking the marrow from your delicate bones. Not quite the sucking you've grown accustomed to as late. Please, don't threaten. It's not very ladylike, and it's certainly very unchristian. Brown nosing twink. Opportunistic slut. Undead fudge packer. Oh! That one stung a little. Let's try one more. Fraud? You can't treat me this way. He can't treat me this way. I'm gonna have a word with him.
Your Grace, we need to have a discussion. It's come to my attention that you've made some crucial decisions without my consultation. I cannot believe you would entrust such important matters with someone as inexperienced as he is. I'm your personal advisor. I need to be kept up on all matters. And this is appalling. I, I've done everything for you, and I find out you've bypassed me on important matters. I need to be kept in the loop. We're never going to get what we want. You're never going to find the woman without my help. Are you even listening to me? Stupid Indian cow. I heard everything you said. Vampire hearing. You seem a little surprised at my transformation. Do I frighten you? Look at me. Look at me! Oh, that's better. Much better. Now, do not forget your place, dear sister. That would be most unfortunate if you did. This is just an illusion. It's not real. You think so? Oh, I'd be so disappointed if it was. And you have forgotten your place. But how did you do it? You're old, weak. Ancient Mongolian secret. I see where Sean gets his sense of humor. Interesting. For a human, female, you have quite a pair on you, marching in here telling me what to do. Didn't quite expect such a thing from you. Not too many do. And no apology. If I didn't know any better, I would say you want to get your throat ripped out. Of course not. I mean, I didn't mean... I'm just trying to be honest, Your Grace. Honesty. Interesting. I don't actually remember the last time anyone was truly honest with me. But while we're on the subject of honesty, please elaborate on your feelings about Father Michael. I take it from your little rant before that you feel he may be a bit of a problem. Yes, well, I mean... Go on. Give it to me straight. Yes, he is a problem for us, but mostly for you. How so? With all due respect, Your Grace, Father Michael does not have your best interests at heart. He has little to no concern about your situation, our mission, and if I may put it bluntly... You may. A flippant regard for the timeliness of your condition. I know he's your personal confidant, but he's more interested in his own needs, his own vanity, his own loss for power. Sounds like a boy after my own heart. But he will sacrifice us, you, to get what he wants. He's a liability, which he's shown going through that worthless torturing of that annoying little vampire. I'm sorry, I mean no disrespect. You're Jean. Yes, my boy. It's a shame I wasn't there to enjoy some of that. But you, you are fascinating to understand all of this. Hmm. Perhaps you do have the sight after all. Do you think you can do better? Do you think you can serve me better? I know I can. Well, then you know what you need to do. Prove to me you're not among one of those pathetic hanger-ons. If the situation is as dire as you say it is, then you must do whatever is needed to rectify that to take what is yours. What do you mean? Oh, don't be cold. Take whatever steps you feel that is necessary to clear the path for you to serve me better, to serve our mission better. Do you understand me? Yes, yes I do. Good. Now go fetch Father Michael. There are some things you need to attend to straight away. Of course. My dumplings. 
Lovely sister Elizabeth here has brought out some excellent points. We have waited long enough, and our time has come to make our next move. Don't worry, my dear Father Michael, your plan is still moving as expected. But I agree here with Sister Elizabeth, a few pawns on the board must be moved into place. You both are to travel back to my church, find out what is happening or has happened in that dungeon. It's been some time since we've heard anything from that fodder of a priest that was assigned to the task. If nothing else, I do hope Sean has eaten him by now. What a waste of flesh that boy was. Oh, if I may interject, Your Grace, I, I do remember him when he first arrived. Uh, seemed to do well initially. Showed potential. He bowed to all of our, your demands. Uh, but, oh, what a train wreck. I, he was just a time bomb waiting to go off. I, the cleanup will not be pretty. Well, he was your choice, and I like how you assume that he's already dead. We cannot assume anything at this point. Well, I can assume that you- Children, enough. Either way, that train wreck had an important role in our plans. So find out what has transpired. Talk to whoever is left. Remove all traces of any unpleasantries. Learn all that you can. My dear sister Elizabeth, I have a special mission that is right up your alley. And Michael, it has been brought to my attention there is someone in my employ that could use your delicate guidance. And when you have completed these tasks, I'll be waiting for you at the time and place I have indicated. What? Are you traveling without me? I, I should be with you. I, Sister Elizabeth, I'm sure, is capable of taking care of these embarrassing tasks by herself. I have plenty of assistance to help me. I will be fine. What you're doing is very important. I wouldn't give this to just anybody. It is crucial that you do this the way I want you to. I fully understand, Your Grace. As always, Your Grace. Excellent. Sister Elizabeth, you may leave us now. Father Michael needs to attend to my personal matters. Of course, Your Grace. I live to serve you. Are you all right? What do you need, Your Grace? I'm fine. I just want to get rid of the skirt. <laughs> Your Grace, you, you are so naughty. That's what got me here. But I must say, Father Michael, you're looking especially evil this evening. Always for you. I don't know how you had everyone fooled last week when we snuck out of the building and mingled around the locals. How did you do that? I just show people what they want to see. I have to agree, though. Last week's stunt took a lot out of me. But we have much more important matters to discuss. What is it? Have I displeased you? Never in a thousand years, assuming I get to a thousand. We need to talk about a delicate issue regarding our sister Elizabeth. It has come to my attention that she's become a liability. I am aware of this. With your blessing, shall I take care of the problem? Always a thoughtful boy. Take whatever steps you feel that are necessary to clear the path for you to serve me better, to serve our mission better. Certainly. You needn't give it a second thought. I won't. But thank you, Father Michael. You may leave me now. Oh, don't pout. You know I have a weakness for pouting boys. I live to serve you, Your Grace. This should prove to be enormously and violently <laughs> entertaining. <laughs> 